Hi, my name is David Terre, and today I'm going to give you an introduction to Fibonacci numbers. So, let's proceed. So here's my outline. First, I'm going to define Fibonacci numbers, then I'll present a small table, and then finally I'm going to um, present a formula and derive a formula for the sum of the first n Fibonacci numbers. So let's proceed. What are Fibonacci numbers? Fibonacci numbers are a sequence of natural numbers, which we denote as F1, F2, F3, and so on. First two numbers in the sequence are both uh, defined to be equal to 1. So we have F1 equals F2 equals 1. And in addition, for every index n greater than 2, the nth Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two. So Fn is equal to Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2. So, for instance, F3 is equal to F2 plus F1, which is 1 plus 1, or 2. F4 is F3 plus F2, which is 2 plus 1, or 3. F5 is F4 plus F3, which is 3 plus 2, or 5, and so on. So, um, we should note that um, these two equations I wrote down, equations 1 and 2 together, completely define the Fibonacci sequence. Equation 1 is what we call the initial conditions, and equation 2 um, is what we call the recurrence equation. So those two equations complete define the sequence. Once you have those two equations, you know Fn for every, every positive integer n. And here's a table of the first 24 Fibonacci numbers. So as you can see, they start out pretty small, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, I already showed you those. And then after that, they grow pretty quickly. By the time you're up to n equals 24, you have f24 is 46,368. Um, uh, the Fibonacci numbers are what's uh, called a geometric sequence. They're not exactly a geometric sequence, but they're very close to one. Uh, and those grow very fast, exponentially. So, like I said, I'm going to sum up this little lecture with a... Um, formula for the sum of the first n Fibonacci numbers. So um, let's just look at the first few, S1. So S1 is just uh, the first Fibonacci number, which is 1. Um, not too exciting, but then S2 is F1 plus F2, which is 1 plus 1 or 2. S3 is the sum of the first three, which um, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 4. S4 is the sum of the first four, which is equal to 7. S5 is the sum of the first five, which is equal to 12. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's actually a pattern to these uh, sums. We don't have to sum up all the first n. Suppose you want to do S100. There's a much easier way to get that than to sum the first 100 Fibonacci numbers. Turns out there's a nice formula. Here's the formula. Uh, formula 3, Sn is Fn plus 2 minus 1. And we could kind of guess that formula if we look at this pattern, if you notice that S1 was 1, that happens to be 2 minus 1, and 2 is F3. So S1 is equal to F3 minus 1. S2 turns out to be equal to 3 minus 1, which is F4 minus 1. S3 is 5 minus 1, which is F5 minus 1. S4 is 8 minus 1, which is F6 minus 1. S5 is 13 minus 1, which is F7 minus 1. And uh, we've shown this formula works for n up to 5, but we're I'm going to hypothesize that it also works for all n, every positive integer n. And how do, we, how do we actually prove this formula? We can't prove it by looking at every possible value of n because there's infinitely many. But fortunately, there's a very powerful method in math called the method of mathematical induction. That's what we're going to use to prove this formula. So the way mathematical induction works is we start with a base case. In this case, that's just n equals 1. That's the smallest value of n that we can use. And we already proved the base case because we verified that formula 3 works when n equals 1, i.e. S1 is equal to F3 minus 1. We actually verified for the first five cases, but we don't even need it for the first one. But then the way to complete our proof is by proving what's called the induction hypothesis. And what the induction hypothesis is, is the assumption that if uh, the uh, equation 3, which I wrote down here, holds for some value of n, and we already know it holds for n equals 1, then it holds for n plus 1 as well. 
and this is true for all n. So for instance, we know that it works for n equals one, and if we can prove uh, the induction hypothesis, then it also holds for n equals two, and by the same induction hypothesis, holds for n equals three, n equals four, so on, all the way up to infinity. So we just have to prove the induction hypothesis. So let's do that. Well, how do we do it? Well, we start with the definition of Sn plus one, just the sum of the first n plus one Fibonacci numbers, F1 plus two, up to Fn plus one. And if you notice, the first n numbers in these sums is just what we call Sn. And so we have Sn plus the thing that's left over, Fn plus one. And if you notice that if we use formula three for Sn, which we've already assumed holds for some n, um, then um, we, we write down, just using formula three, Fn plus two minus one for Sn, plus Fn plus one, that's what was left over. And that, and just rearranging terms, we see that's equal to Fn plus two, plus Fn plus one minus one, which is equal to S F Fn plus three minus one, using the recurrence equation for the Menachi numbers. So voila, we've proved equation four. From equation three which means we've proved the induction hypothesis so we're done that proves the formula three holds this formula holds for all n so we're done and that concludes my lecture my introduction to fibonacci numbers and um uh, if you get a chance please subscribe to my youtube channel dave's math videos and uh thank you for watching and i'll see you next time